so at Facebook, um, from when I started at 100 people, um, we and no other communications professionals, we always had an agency. Um, and then we just grew that relationship over time. Well, we fired one and then hired Outcast that remains today. Um, and now I think they have quite a few agencies, right, Decker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all over the world. Um, I, you know, and, and now I'm an agency myself. Right. <laughs> yeah, so. Before you bash agency. Yeah, I'm exactly. Sure uh, <laughs> well, my question is also then to you, Brandy, is, you know, yeah. as someone <clears throat> who is at an agency, what is, the, what is the pitch? What are you selling to these early stage companies that you can do now and bridge before they might consider in-house resources? Well, I mean, I think it? what we do at Pramana is a little bit different than what the typical agency does. I mean, most especially because we're only five people. Um, and so we're just not at, at scale to service companies in the same way an outcast would or even a brew or a text or any number of the agencies out there. Um, I mean, I, I, I 100% support having an agency involved because I think not only um, does it give you, um, it takes you away from the group think, that you get some perspective as long as you have smart people on the account. You also have tactical arms and legs and you can adjust budget based on growth. Um, but at the same time, an agency, including my own, is never going to understand your business in the same way your in-house team will. So I, I fully um, endorse the growth of in-house teams um, to 41 <laughs> in some cases. Um, I think Facebook's is probably over 150 at this point um, worldwide. I, you know, they, they live and breathe what the company is. And so I, I think whenever you can do that at, at a certain stage, I, I think you've got to be, you know, really managing that scale. Um, in the early years, but but over time, that I think that's what's going to serve you well. Gary, real Shannon, do you guys do you have agencies outside of the in-house resources? We actually we have 12 agencies, little known secret. In addition to my 41 people, um, so we actually use uh, Edelman outside of the U.S. And so the best news is, like the head of sales will call me and say, "Oh, we're going to open an office in Dubai next week." So I can call the Edelman account person and say, "Hey, do you have a Middle East team?" Yes, I do. Done. That's been the best part, instead of doing this lengthy RFP and trying to find these agencies. So that's worked really, really well. Pretty much everyone we use in the US is a sole proprietor or a shop of very small amounts of people. Mm -hmm. So we don't bring um, big agencies into the mix. We've tried it before. It has not worked for us. Um, we've definitely given it the old college try. But for us, it works just to have a smaller team who's more nimble. The budgets are not enormous. So before everyone's 12th agency, eyes roll back in their head. Um, you know, we're paying them uh, a decent amount, and the work we're getting out is really great, but for us it comes down to kind of this chemistry fit, too. Who do we like having here, and if I were hit by a bus, God forbid, who could come into that meeting and handle it just as well as I think I would? Yes? I just wanted to ask, if you have 12 agencies and you have a team of 41 people, how are you deciding what the agency's taking and what your internal people are So I, each um, PR manager on my team runs their own business and they get to choose their own agency. So I really kind of leave it up to them. It depends on the person. So some use it purely for arms and legs, some have it completely for strategy. Um, some use it just for media, some use it not at all for media. So it just depends on the business area and the manager who decides to use it for what. That's why it's not really very uniform for us. And part of the reason I did that is because the PR managers really do want to make their own choices about who they hire and how they spend that budget. So for me it's more of an empowering thing than it is I really care what, you know, Edelman is being used for an X country. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really any thoughts? So we have uh, maybe a similar arrangement where, where we don't have any agencies that we use here in the US, but we have several that we use abroad. And my general philosophy about this is, I think it is a perfectly reasonable idea to use agencies internationally to help with coverage. What I'm generally opposed to is the use of agencies to outsource core capabilities. And by that, what I mean is you'll sometimes hear, well, we have this whole team, but we need an agency that specializes in crisis communications, let's say. That, to me, just seems like a profoundly bad idea. Because here's something that if you're in, let's just say, the world of technology, crisis is going to be part of your daily 
weekly, monthly diet, things happen. That's the nature of, of technology. It's the nature of being in a disruptive business. And if I would argue every single person on your team, every person on your team does not have the ability in some way to, ha to manage a crisis, you have a problem with how you've hired. So I don't think it's a good idea to be sort of outsourcing by discipline, but I do think it's a, a good idea to complement your team in terms of, of coverage and arms and legs. It's well said.